we're going to start our chapter on parameter estimation by talking about simple linear regression. So you may remember from chapter one that when we talk about a simple regression model, we're talking about a regression model that has only a single predictor variable. When we talk about simple linear regression, it means that we're assuming that the mean response, given that we know the value of our predictor variable, is beta naught plus beta one x. And so it's going to be a straight line. If you, so if you're going to plot this as a function of x, it's going to be some sort of straight line. Uh, it could go in upward direction or a downward direction, but it's going to be a straight line. And we're also going to make the assumption that the variance of our response, conditional on knowing the predictor value, the value of the predictor variable, is equal to sigma squared. So we're assuming that the variability of our response is constant as we move along the x-axis, conditional on knowing the value of x. So y is our response variable, x is our predictor or regressor variable, and then beta 1 and beta naught are more generally known as regression parameters or regression coefficients. So a predictor variable is one of the original explanatory variables observed for a data set. So a lot of times when we're in this class, I'll talk about predictor variables, and I'm simply talking about the variables that we were given in our original data set. But sometimes we want to make a transformation of a predictor variable, in which case we have a regressor variable. So sometimes I'll say predictor, sometimes I'll say regressor. I use these terms loosely, but technically, technically a predictor variable is one of the original explanatory variables that we observed with our data set, and a regressor variable is some sort of transfer, transformation uh, of a predictor variable. So how do we interpret these simple linear regression coefficients? So way back in our algebra class that we took as a, as a younger individual, we probably saw a line of this type. So we might have been y equals mx plus b or y equals a plus bx, but we figured out how to draw this straight line uh, as a function of our x variable. But when we're in statistics, these coefficients have more specific meanings. So beta naught is our intercept, and it is the mean response when x is equal to 0. So if I put in x equal to 0 here, 0 times beta 1 will become 0, and I'll be left with beta naught. So beta naught is the mean response when x is equal to 0. Additionally, beta 1 is going to be our slope, and it is going to be the expected change in y when x increases by one unit. So let's just do a little math real quick. So let's say that we uh, initially that x is equal to x naught and then we increase x from x naught to x plus one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the expected value of y given x equals x naught plus one and we'll subtract from that the expected value of the response given x equals x naught. Okay, so this is going to be beta naught plus beta 1, and then I'm replacing x with x naught plus 1. And in this case, I'm going to replace, whoops, in this case, I'm going to replace my x with x naught. And if you look at what happens here, this is going to cancel with this. This part is going to cancel with this times beta 1, and so I'm just left with beta 1. And so what does this represent then? So it represents the difference in the mean response when we move from x naught to x naught plus 1. Or more generally, if we increase our predictive variable by one unit, it tells us how much we expect the response to change. And it might even be best to look at a graphic that shows what these two things represent. So uh, beta naught is the mean response, it's the value of our regression line when x equals x naught, I'm sorry, when x equals zero in this case. And so in this example, beta naught is probably about 1.25 or so. So we don't know the exact value from looking at this graphic, but it looks to be about 1.25. And beta one is gonna represent how much this line, how much the response value changes on this regression line when we increase the x variable by one unit. So I'm moving from x equals 1 to x equals 2, and my regression line changes by this amount, beta 1. And I'm guessing, so looking at this, it looks like maybe it's about 0.5 or so. So beta 1 is about 0.5 in this example right here. So our, so our intercept is the mean response when x equals 0, and beta 1 is how much my response is expected to change when I increase my predictor variable by a single unit. And 
unlike what you learned in algebra with these y equals a plus bx lines or y equals mx plus b, we assume that our regression parameters are unknown when we're in a statistical context, and we actually, actually need to estimate them from our observed data. So in your algebra class, you assume that you knew what a was, you knew what b was, but in our class, these are the things we actually have to estimate using the data we observed. So let's talk a little bit more detail in regards to terminology and notation. So we're going to assume, in general, that we have n observations or cases. So this is the number of people or the number of things that we have data for. And our response values are going to be denoted by y1, y2, all the way up to yn. So these are the individual responses for the n observations. And our regressor values for our single regressor x are going to be denoted by x1, x2, up to xn. You'll see that this will change when we move into the multiple linear regression context. But in the simple linear regression context, we have a single regressor x, and the individual values are going to be denoted x1, x2, up to xn. And when we have real data, the response is going to deviate from what we expect to happen on average. And so we, because we're doing statistics, there's going to be error. And so the statistical model for each individual response is that the ith response is going to be beta naught plus beta 1 xi. Okay, remember, so yi is the response for the ith observation. xi is the regressor value for the ith observation. So the ith response is going to be beta naught plus beta 1 xi plus epsilon i, where epsilon i is the error, the deviation of the response from its mean. So we have the mean response, then we're going to have a little bit of random error that we add on top of that. And really, the job in statistics is that because we have error, we need to estimate beta naught and beta 1. We can't estimate them perfectly. And there are some additional assumptions that we typically make uh, in simple linear regression, or really in linear regression in general. So we are, we're going to assume that our errors have mean 0, variance sigma square, and that the errors are uncorrelated, which means that if I know the value of one error in relation to the mean, I'm not going to know the, next, the value of the next error in relation to the mean. So mathematically, this is the same as saying that the expected value of the error, assuming that I know x equals xi, uh, is 0. So assuming I know the value of my predictor, uh, the expected value of the error is 0. The variance of the errors, conditional on knowing the predictor value, is going to be sigma squared. And if we're looking at the covariance between any two errors that are not the same error, their covariance is going to be equal to 0. So these are, the condi these are actually conditions that we don't just make in simple linear regression, but we'll make in uh, linear regression in general.